showtime. It's about that time. Let's go. You're right where you need to be. This is GCOM Radio. Hard, hard radio station. On the bridge. Yeah. Powered by Powered Lightblood.com. We certified. Uh. And hosted by Nova Phoenix and LK Mason. Give them that flavor. Yo, yeah, what up, y'all? This is GCOM Radio. I'm your host, Nova Phoenix, and we had the lady right here. The lady, the illustrious, the lovable, the beautiful. Who else? L.K. Mason. L.K. Mason <laughs> in his house. What's up, yeah, Nova man. P? Chilling, man, chilling, man. This Nova's is, uh, the homie, man. Nova. He gets on my nerves, y'all, but... I love that dude. He's the homie. <laughs> you know, I, I got to tell you, there's no the, other person. The guy is mad brilliant. Guy. Let me just say that because he gives oh, me please. all these compliments and you even giving me a chance to say a little bit something about you. He's mad brilliant. Like, I love to have conversations with him because his vocabulary is out of this world. And so I like to surround myself with people who I, I find to have be on my level a little inch more i'm not saying he a little inch more but his vocabulary got me beat a little bit because <laughs> dude loves to read i i, I admittedly don't love to read <laughs> unless it's extremely interesting uh, but yes nova p is a man i you know i hate taking com i hate taking compliments i i'll shower people with them but i just don't yeah, I'm not the person to be like, yes. You know what I mean? This isn't um, an everyday thing because, you know, we don't get along all the time. But you No, know. no, we be, we be fighting, y'all. <laughs> we be fighting like, yo, what you talking about? But I put him on notice. <laughs> like, yo, I don't, that's not my energy. We not, if we fight again, we break it up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we need therapy. We need he going to be announcing the show. This is Nova P. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, we need therapy. We do. We, I can't. I can't. We gonna. There's gonna come a time where we gonna get in the same space in a in a in a studio, man. However, it works out, and that's gonna be that's gonna be even like the next milestone. That's gonna be beautiful. Whether it's gonna be in Ohio or New York, it's gonna be a special get together and yeah, yep. event yeah. thing. We do this, that's man. Gonna be, I'm telling you, man. I'm not even front. I'm not even front, lady. When that did happen, I'm gonna be you know grown man style. I'm gonna be like, yo, this. Yo, this going this you can put the lump right in my chest, man. Right <laughs> you gonna um, get a little emotional. <laughs> little tear in the eye a little, little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't do the crocodile crying, <laughs> man. It's the crocodile tears. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> Nah, it's gonna be a little one, the one tear, the, the Hollywood one tear. Like, oh my god, you <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. <Anyway>. <laughs> Yo, first thing I like to say before we get to statement, I even, um, oh man, I even said, oh, boom. All right, so first thing I like to say, I, it was a correction that I wanted to make for a long time. London B that was on the show that uh, had her song on a couple of episodes ago. I said that she did the song Big Old Freak, but she did not do that. That's Megan the Stallion. That's that's Megan Thee Stallion that did Big Old Freeze, not London B. My back, but L London B is d still doing a thing hard. Check out for her stuff. You know what I mean? That's like the first thing. The second thing, I love to give some love to um, the brother that um, it, it just came out. So, yeah. um, uh, uh, Robert uh, Frederick Smith. I just wanted to get his name right. Robert Frederick Smith, uh, the billionaire, black billionaire. He just did the, com he was a com commencement speaker for Morehouse College. And um, he blessed the graduates with um, saying that he was going to pay for all of their student loan debt um just threw out some money amazing like, oh, 40 million dollars and i was like wow that is what's up man that's how you reach back that's to beautiful. the people yeah and uh imagine being a student and say damn man i got like 80 grand i'm all right and then all of a sudden magically gone mm. a, a gift from this brother man so that's how you do it as a ceo billionaire reach back to the people and give that's them a beautiful. chance beautiful you know, Oprah's been doing that for years, and a lot of people didn't even know what? that until, yeah, until her final show when they were celebrating her. And they were like, you know, they wanted to surprise her. You know, of course, Oprah signs all of her checks, so it was really hard to surprise her. But when they showed the special, the behind the scenes, um, they showed um, part of that celebration. And 
they showed all of the guys came out that she paid their tuitions throughout the years at Morehouse and there were some other colleges too and they just all and it was it was like I was like it was never ending it was like all these guys coming up down the aisles and it was a beautiful moment like she even was moved yeah, to tears because she had no clue that this was going on like, again she had to pay for you know whatever it took to get them there <laughs> um yeah, but I you know some stuff yes for years she had been doing that and you know a lot of people do stuff like that on the low you know. Yo, shout out to Oprah. I ain't, I had yeah. no idea. Oh, yes. Wow. All right, cool. All right, then you know, then this, then this brother, this brother Robert ain't the first one to do it. Okay. All right. All right. All right. The um, bless him because to those students needed it too. It's a smack in the face that the, for the folks that created this trillion dollar student loan debt. Because I mean, what better way than to do that, man? What better way? Um, that's why give him props, man. Give him props. So yeah. So what we got going on? Yeah, 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 for yeah. For today's oh. episode. Yeah, what we got going on? Oh, for the first segment. Oh, yeah, which is a big thing. Alabama governor signs the near total abortion ban. Look, I, man, this, mm. I mean, this has been the, uh, like like a main topic that I've been speaking with a lot of people this past week. And this is coming off um, the Georgia. It did something similar. And um, they passed a, what you call a heartbeat a heartbeat uh, uh, abortion uh, bill. Yes. And um, I, yo, I don't, yo, as a man, I don't even get it. Like, I'm like, what? So you mean you're going to criminalize doctors for performing abortion on on women that want it, right? Mm -hmm. And this is, of course, this is an indirect retaliation, which has been a long time battle with Roe versus Wade, giving uh, the women a right to, um, um, abortion or seeking out abortion when they don't want a pregnancy and it one of the, the the funniest things that brought up that was brought up about it is that it doesn't even mention rape it doesn't even mention that and i'm like what wait a second so even in rape cases women can't get an abortion i mean it's built into the bill where they're saying that if a woman has a miscarriage she could even be thought of uh or she been she can be scrutinized uh, by having a miscarriage and they can be by, I don't know, I don't know what officers are going to deal with this. They could come down to the hospital or something or to the home afterwards and actually question a woman if her miscarriage was legit. Can you imagine that as a wow. woman, how traumatizing a miscarriage wow. is? You're going through the emotional roller coaster of losing a, a, a life that was being, that was was growing in you you lost a life and then you gonna have some fool come up to you and ask you to see if it's legit or not yo yo you just want to slam the door on somebody's face like yo get up yo get up out my face man get up out my face yo this is i can't see it as anything else is but uh uh using this to weaponize against women or controlling women it is absolutely horrendous how i see this absolutely horrendous and you think it's just in alabama so i'm doing a little searching or georgia there was a couple states that that did something similar um and got it passed so for instance uh mississippi governor phil bryant signed a heartbeat bill in march um exceptions are to prevent a woman's death or her uh serious or her serious risk of impairment um that passed in Ohio, right here, your home state. Mm -hmm. Governor Mike DeWine signing a heartbeat bill in April, a day after that, after the state house and senate passed a law. Similar legislation was vetoed by former Governor John Kasich before he left office. Um, in Georgia, of course, we know in Kentucky, uh, a heartbeat bill was passed in March, but a federal judge stopped it from being enforced. In Arkansas, Governor Asa Hutchinson signed a bill in March that bans abortion after 18 weeks into a pregnancy, six weeks before the standards set by Roe versus Wade, except in medical emergencies and in case of rape or incest. Um, Utah similarly passed a law that bans abortion after 18 weeks gestation, but was blocked by a federal judge in April. Um, in Iowa, Republican Governor Kim Reynolds signed a heartbeat legislation in May 2018 but a state judge struck down a law this January. It's like, you know, it's a number of different states that's pushing this through this heartbeat bill. And, um, you know, the logic escapes me why this is happening. Um, and, and, and I have a, a few ideas 
what it could be. I think from uh, I think it's one of two things. Um, I think religion has something to do with it because a lot of the women that I've met uh, and along my years and my young youth, in 20 years old, 25, coming up as an adult, a lot of it was like my parents do not believe in abortion. You know, I'm, I'm Christian. They don't believe in abortion. I'm going to have it. And then you have a lot of kids out of wedlock. All right. That's number one. Um, number two, I think it a little bit, it can be involved with toxic masculinity um, as far as control of women. And this is something that's it's nothing new. It's not even unique to the United States. It's something that, you know, uh, on further research, light research, that a lot of this is illegal in other countries around the world. And it's all, it's all, to me, it's always been an ongoing battle between um, uh, women's rights or, or gender equality and respecting women's bodies and how men tend to try to control them because, you know, in this country, might makes right. And it's a lot of countries and they feel like, well, if men have strength, or we're physically stronger than we have a right to control women, not just physically, but also how they move about in society. And I think that's crazy. I think that's archaic um, it, it, as far back as sticks and stones and making fire out of twigs. We have to advance ourselves as a species, man, that you cannot control women's bodies. And I me as a, I'm just saying this as a man, like, you know, I know people that like are livid with this thing and, and New York. I mean, hey, hey, let me tell you something. It ain't going down in New York. There will be pitchforks and torches right there at the mayor's office, at the mayor's, uh, um, uh, 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 whatever, at City Hall, down in Lower Manhattan, if this was to go down. I'm, but I, I'm like, where did... And then there was another picture that was showing, is, is circulating show, social media. Of all the politicians that were involved in pushing this through, all of them were white, all of them were male, all of them were older. And it's a pattern here developing on the motivations behind getting these getting this abortion these abortion bills passed now mind you the alabama governor is a woman but again a lot of times the the um the the um what's the word the agenda especially from uh from from a, a gender point of view the agenda has been can be pushed through women it doesn't have the matter with sex and um it's crazy how I how I'm seeing this develop. Um, I mean, how do you feel about this this whole thing? Man, um, <clears throat> especially in Ohio. I mean, I didn't even know. I was like, Ohio word. Well, what I don't think a lot of Ohioans knew. I think that a lot of Ohioans um, didn't or didn't stay woke. You know what I'm saying? I think mm -hmm. they didn't realize it until after they saw the trending news about Alabama, and then they said, Oh wait, that's us too. You know what I mean? Um, I don't. I don't yeah. think they really knew that. But as someone who who did grow up in a religious background, um, it's difficult to be to think about discussions like this. Right. Um, first and foremost, you know, my religion is is there. I'm true to that. But at the same time, you know, I don't believe in pushing your religion on other people just like I don't want them pushing their beliefs on me. So just because abortion would not be for me, it would not be my choice. I would not try to force that decision on someone else because those are my beliefs that, you know, I, I just, I just don't think anyone has the right to tell a woman what she can and cannot do with her body. And mm. if you're going to find this woman because you're saying she's breaking the law, then whoever the father of that child is needs to be going down right along with her. She did not lay Boom. down by herself. Boom. She did not make that baby by herself. And even though he may not have made the decision with her and gone to get that abortion, if you're going to lock her up, lock him up too. Because Boom. the pregnancy altogether could have been prevented. You know what I mean? Boom, toxic masculinity. How are you just going to put it on women? Right. How are you just going to put it on women? So, right. whoa, 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 whoa. so she, I she. think if, if, if the law stated that, I think you would have more people fighting to get rid of it because men would realize, oh, wait a minute, I can get locked up too? 
<laughs> because she decided that she don't want to have my baby. Oh yeah, let me go ahead and uh, fight for this because <laughs> I can't control what she decides. You know? Exactly. Boom. Now, if you feel, if you feel that life is so precious and you shouldn't even be dealing with the choice of abortion, if you're pro-life, then put it on men too. What about vasectomies? Huh? Right. How about that? Tied to uh, 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 men. All right. If you if you feel like life is so precious, it shouldn't be just put on women. Vasectomies. Set it right. up. All right? right. Why don't you Why don't you put the pressure on men? It's yes. crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Um. Uh. And the other thing is, I I I think it would be a disservice to even try to eliminate the other factor, the other factor of race. And um. And they, there are plenty of articles that came out the same in the near future, in about 20, 25 years, that the minority in this country would be the majority. And a big part of that is uh, uh, the, the minority, that growth is Latino community. And, um, and biracial. It's, and biracial community, that's, that's growing. So when you couple the, the, all these abortion laws that are popping up in all of these red states, I have to say, and you see what's happening at the border and where they're locking up all of these uh, 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 South American immigrants that's coming into the country. You can't help but to think, put two two together. Is this a direct response over the data that's coming out and, and the articles that are coming out saying that the minority will be the majority in 2040, 2045? And this is a new... Uh, um, day for America or America will have to face this changing demographic and how will people interact with each other how is it going to affect politics how is it going to affect communities city states and so such and so forth and how this can be uh, psychologically affect the white population um, to be frank um, and I think this is a reflexive action to that and so again is religion and I think a lot of times I just don't want to uh, uh, throw religion and and, and uh, into be the direct blame for that and I think a lot of times we kind of scapegoat religion because right. you have good there's good Christians and overall on the books Christianity the way it professes itself of course you know all the good and, and understanding evil and being the best Christian you can be but I think even over time human beings have scapegoated religion to say you know what in the name of Jesus I'm going to slaughter 100,000 people because that's what Jesus said I should do. Or I should hate another person of color because, you know, a lot of times you have to say, a lot of races would say, you know, I'm being a good Christian. And what good Christians do, they always preface their racism with that. Well, I'm really? a Christian. Really? Where does it Christians say in the Bible? Up, yo, do you feel me? So, <laughs> in, in a sense, it's religion. And two is toxic masculinity. And three is racism. I think those are three things that are causing this fever to kind of start bubbling up in America and you have these illogical actions taking place that are against women and you know against other demographics in this country but right here in particular this abortion thing this is crazy man this is like you know pulling I mean you're gonna have women using uh, hangers to pull you know to right. try to abort you know, doing it illegal way. And even they're saying that's built into the bill now, which I read, they're saying if it's not done at a legal facility or clinic, uh, before the, the six weeks, a woman can be, you know, brought up to charges. I mean, this is, this is like, I've heard people saying this is like Handmaiden's Tale. This is straight out of that, uh, show Handmaiden's Tale where women are being, their bodies are being controlled. I, I can't understand it. Right. It's like, oh, that, yo, that kills me. It, it straight kills me, man. I don't, I'm like, imagine somebody telling you, Latasha, no, nah, you can't do that. You can't put no tattoos on you. Nah, 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 nah. You can't get that. You can't uh, get rid of that hangnail. That's not what you're supposed to do. Nah, nah, that's a part of your I was going to say, do I don't that. have any tattoos. I would never get one. <laughs> yeah. Or saying, or saying, or they saying, um, no, 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 no. You're going to have to, uh, 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 you can't use that lipstick. It's like, you're trying to tell me what I should do with my body. Where in 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 all that we know, in all the books that we've read, scientific, in 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 in, in sense of theology with religion and all that, all we know, where it says that you have a right over my body. 
it's the illogicalness of it all, man. It's the asinine belief that you can control a woman and her body when she's and this one dude said you know no knock on this dude this one dude was like on my ig and i posted something he's like oh man should have a say in in abortion too in just a little bit and he put like a sad emoticon on there i'm like nah really bro in a nice way i'm like nah brother just like everything else a woman owns on her body it's the same thing when she becomes pregnant she owns that as well it is a part of her she is a sacred vessel of life that's right. her responsibility so, as a christian i don't want because i because you said something that and i don't want people to think you know that just slipped by and i'm agreeing with it because i don't agree right, wait, go ahead, go ahead. with you know abortion not being um something that you should not do religiously uh, um because to me you are killing someone right. you know that that is a life i don't care you know, at what stage it is, it is a life. But I cannot put myself in position of a woman who is carrying this being and does not want it. Because just because that life is precious, yes, that life is precious, but if you let a woman carry this child that she does not want, you don't know what's gonna happen to that child when she births it, you know? Um, you don't know if that child is going to live a ha a life of living you know what because this mother does not want this child and so that child grows up being someone who's a you know bomber or terrorist or whatever because they well, never the, got the that argument love is or... give it up for adoption give it up to adoption then that's what they're arguing all right yeah well, that that doesn't baby always baby. work out either so you know so I I just didn't want you know that statement going by that um you know that nothing in the bible says that no that is that is murder i mean you are killing someone so um so you are you, you okay so you're 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 for abortion you don't have a problem with that uh you what just, do you mean i mean i'm excuse me you're against abortion excuse me i messed that up you're against abortion because you feel it's a precious life but you don't you, i'm trying to understand but you don't necessarily think feel that there should be legislation put to control a woman's body yeah, what I'm saying is I'm, I'm never going to say that it's not, you're not killing someone because you are killing a life. And okay, no that is something that is against my religious beliefs. But, right. um, again, different people have different beliefs. I don't want them forcing their beliefs on me and I'm not going right. to force my beliefs on them. Ultimately, Whatever you do in life is between you and God. That is my belief. Whether or not you okay. believe in him no is no also question. between you and him. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I just feel like it is none of my business. Well, however God wants to deal with you on whatever you do or don't do is between y'all. But this is my <laughs> thing. If you're against abortion, that's fine. Then don't let your family do it. What? What? does your belief or your idea have to do with someone 500 miles away understand what i'm saying if you're against abortion all right you're personally against it fine cool that's you what does that have to do with a whole several thousand people a thousand miles away or in another state it, it's, I'm i like, mean that's essentially what i just I'm said like, like it really is none of your business what they're doing you know what i'm right. saying whatever they whether or not you believe in god what you do and do not do in life is between you and him. You know, if you kill someone, whether there's a living person who is outside of the womb and you murder that person, ultimately your answer, you're gonna have to answer to God. Whether you get caught by the police or not, you might think that, yeah, you got away with it, but whether you believe in God or not, you're gonna deal with him. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't, you don't have to believe in God for you to have to answer to him. Um, so right. basically what I'm saying is no, I don't, I, I don't believe in abortion, but no, I don't think this law is right to force a woman to have a child that she does not want to have. Um, and right. however she has to answer that with her Lord and savior, if she believes in him or not, it's just between her and him. It ain't none of your business. That's how I feel about it. And you know the funny thing is, 
these same politicians is putting these anti-abortion bills having their little side pieces mm-hmm. and they whatever and then when the thing don't work out they taking them right to the clinic themselves I think one dude politician had to resign because of that. I'm like, come on. I mean, there's a, there, I mean, there are so many hypocrites, especially when it comes to like religious type things. People will blame religion, just like you said, all the time. People will say they don't eat pork because of religion, where you could, you know, God changes things in the Bible many times, and He says that anything that He created is it, you can eat. You know what I'm saying? So. And, Right. There may have been one point where he said that the pig was filthy or whatever, but anything that God blesses us with, we can't consume. You know what I mean? So right. then you have these people talking about, you know, uh, yeah, no, nah, you shouldn't be eating that because God said this and that and other, and it's not good for you and blah, blah, blah. And it's killing people and giving you high blood pressure and heart attacks and yada, yada. I said, okay, but sex is giving people AIDS. Did you stop doing that? Mm. Mm. and it mm. is and we know for a fact a sin to have sex outside of wedlock but you're still doing it mm. Mm. so mm. people just want to use whatever they want to use to suit what they if they're doing it it's okay <laughs> but if, mm. if they're not doing it mm. it's not okay and that's not right mm. it doesn't matter if it's you know if it's if it's within the Bible and you're following what God says, whether you're doing it or not, it's wrong. If I'm having sex outside of wedlock, I'm sinning. <laughs> mm. Now I might deem it's okay and because people, I'm doing it. I might feel like, well, it's all right. I'm all right. You know what I mean? Because I'm doing mm. it, but just because I feel like I'm all right doesn't mean it's not a sin. You know what I mean? You might think it's a mm, less mm, sin. You mm, feel mm. like, but the, but the Bible says that not one sin is greater than the other. So you're no better than somebody who's out there murdering somebody. So don't get me to preaching though. Hey, but hey, you hey. know. <laughs> 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 don't get me what? What? Don't, don't get, get me, me on the soapbox. Yeah, don't get me preaching. Yeah. But hey, man, I'm like yo. If you're a religious person and you and then having sex out of uh, out of uh, outside of marriage, it's fornication. And there's some religious people I know that do it. And they just, hey, they deal with it. I'm like, hey, man, that's my choice I'm making. That's between me and God, as you said. So on that note, we're going to go into the first song for the show. We bring it back, Ricardo Williams with Forever Didn't Last. Hard to pick a song off this dude's EP. It's out now, by the way. It's called Intermission. Please check that out on any streaming services. Ricardo Williams, Forever Didn't Last. Boom. Tom Radio. I am one of the flyers on iHeartRadio.
says, oh, can't take back the things we said, no, maybe in another life, oh, maybe then we'll only we can right. find a way to love. Gcom Radio, powered by Lifeblood.com. Come join, be a lifer. Practice dollar power and build financial independence. Yeah, man, we, we return. Well, that was uh, Reese with Hollow. Just another banger, man. Uh, much love to Reese, man. Much Bye. success to our next record uh, that's coming out. Um, all right, so our next topic is about uh, homelessness. So I peaked this article. And, you know, I'll be w- walking through the streets of New York and, you know, I see homeless people and, you know, I was just recently just scanning the Internet and I saw this one. You know, every state is having a problem with homelessness. And this one article, I think it was L.A. Yeah, let me see what uh, where I got this from. Um, it's, uh, it's from uh, L.A. Times, of course, L.A. Times. So they say the whole homeless population is, is soaring soaring uh, across the San Francisco Bay Area. It's saying uh, San Francisco saw a 17% jump in the number of homeless residents in the last two years. Uh, in January, volunteers recorded over 8,000 homeless people living in shelters on the streets of the city of San Fran. Uh, that's about 880,000. Uh, and that's a jump from 6,800 um, in 2017. And they're saying the number of people living in campus and in cars is growing. In the Bay Area, the number of homeless people living in Santa Clara County increased 31% over two years. 31%. It went from like from 7,300, it jumped up to 9,700. In San Jose, they saw a surge of 1,800 people uh, from a total of 6,100 homeless residents living in the county's largest city, East Bay's Alameda County. Ain't any better. A 43% jump since 2017. Your homelessness is crazy. And New York ain't any better. I don't know what the homeless rate is in um, in Ohio. Um, and the laws are different, you know, and that affect the homeless the homeless uh, rates. Let me see you right quick. I never really looked up what the homeless is in Ohio. Um, in 28. In 2018, they're saying um, as of January 2018, Ohio has an estimated 10,249 experiencing homelessness on any given day. That's crazy, man. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. Um, total, uh, a total of uh, uh, over a thousand uh, were family households. 749 were veterans. 686 were accompanied young adults and 730 were individuals experiencing chronic homelessness. Uh, I don't know what the the state of Ohio does with, uh, with homelessness or what programs they got going, um, in New York. That's why it's so hard to even when it, when it comes to, um, renters and, and, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the managers of the, 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 the rental management. It's so hard to throw people out in New York because they're dealing with a, a, a large homeless uh, issue in uh, population in New York. I mean, you send it to court. Let me tell you, if I start, stop paying rent today for whatever reason, the rental management just can't toss me out. They got to take it to court. They got to get the court date. You got to get the lawyer. And then I've known from, from, you know, experiences people, it would take at least a year, year and a half to get somebody out of a home in New York. This is New York. I heard it down south. It's crazy. You don't pay, your ass is out the day <laughs> after. <laughs> you don't pay your money, you out the day after. They send out the sheriff down there. They slap that right there on the door. 
you gots to go. I mean, and they were, I heard they would toss your furniture out on the front sidewalk. Dang. Like, nah. Nah, you're, you're all, you come back and your couch, your lamps, your your dead, your TV, all on, this, on the sidewalk saying, hey man, you can't pay. You gots to go. That's how, you know, the laws are in down south. I think it was in eight in, in Georgia and Florida. Yo, they don't play. So New York is, New York is a special case because it's a big city and there's so many people living here. But damn, I just can't see how the homeless population is is really um, growing. Um, how is it over there? Is it like visible in, in Ohio? Yeah, you know, there is. You know, I don't, I don't get out much like I used to, but um there is and especially if you go to our downtown area you'll see a lot of homeless people and especially around the winter time you'll see people who will have like bags with like socks and scarves and blankets and stuff in it and they'll tie it around like there's just like this gate around court um courtyard square and they'll tie them on there and leave it for the homeless people um you know to keep them warm and stuff because there is a lot of them you know and Sometimes you just you don't know what to do because you want to be helpful, but sometimes there are, are people who are just there um, to get drug money. I remember there there was this one time you just really have to discern you know who to help and who not to help. And this this lady really looked like she didn't look appear to be someone who would be on drugs. She just looked like you know she was homeless and she needed a little bit of help. And I saw her asking people and everyone was turning her away and. Um, you know, I just got put it on my heart and I gave her $10 and she was only asking for $2 and I gave her 10. I didn't have change. And, you know, I just gave it to her and, she, you know, she was wanting to hug me and kiss me and stuff. But, you know, you could tell she hadn't bathed in days and stuff. And it's like, oh, my goodness, I this lady want to hug me. You know how I am. <laughs> I, even if you're clean, I don't want you hugging me if I don't know you. But, um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so she, she was just very grateful, you know, she she was actually in tears. So, you know, I hugged her, I said, no problem, it's no problem. I understand we all go through something. Um, she said, you don't understand. So many people just will, you know, keep walking. So it is very heartbreaking and it's sad. But you again, you don't know. I remember this one day I was sitting in the car at, at Walmart waiting for, uh, I can't remember who I was with, someone was in Walmart and I was in the parking lot waiting in the car. And they were just going to pick up their prescription. And as I'm sitting there, I see a lady um, offer a guy, because there's like a McDonald's right there. And he's uh -huh. saying, you know, asking for money. And she says, well, I'll go right here in McDonald's and I'll get you some food. You know, and he didn't want the food. He wanted the money. And so, no, so that makes yeah. you think, okay, he just want drug money. You know what I mean? Because right. you ask her for food. McDonald's is right there. And she's saying, I'll go in here and buy you some food. And you don't want the food. No, I ain't doing that. Nah, I'll get you food. I'll do that. But nah, 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 nah. I ain't playing. I ain't playing myself. Yeah, I hear you. So what, what is Ohio doing about, like, the homeless? They got, like, uh, homeless shelters? Or yeah, we have some shelters. Like there's there's one that my brother regularly goes and volunteers at. They, you know, feed, give them food. And um, I think they have, like, uh, places for them to sleep. But, you know, they're, they're limiting the amount of room that they have. I think they just moved into a bigger location. But still, they, they still don't even have enough room for all the people that they have. There's, there are a number of places that I know of that some homeless people can go to. But again, it's limited. And so because it is limited, you still end up seeing people who are sleeping, you know, on the streets. And you do wonder, you know, what can you do to help them, you know? Right, right. Now, I think <clears throat> a lot of times people might think uh, being homeless is some kind of a personal flaw. You did something wrong. And I can see sometimes I can say, you know, you get hooked on drugs, crack, you know, um, you all of a sudden you, you, you selling everything in your home and next thing you can't really hold yourself together and you losing it. I get that. But, you know, everybody goes through their their down points and, you know, and we're human. We 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 make mistakes, but we should always have the opportunity to have a second chance. Right. But a lot of times, you know, homelessness, you know, it's just the individual is given a bad set of of circumstances and they just get hit hard and next thing you know they're on skid row like right skid there's so many LA. people who are just one paycheck away from being homeless you know one if, if, paycheck if like lordstown we i was reading something about there were at least i can't remember i know i think 
they that I know of, they were seeing three people that committed suicide because the plant shut down. And I'm like, oh my goodness, you just don't understand what people go through when they lose a job. You know what I mean? Mm, it could, it mm, could mm. change your entire world. Mm, mm. If I hadn't have been everybody. someone, because I had two incidences where I ended up not being able to work and then your situation is, uh, the one incident I was in a car accident when I was working and, um, you know, workers comp. And if your right. employer is fighting it, you won't get any pay until workers comp, you win your case. And so right. I'm right. off work going to physical therapy and everything, no income coming in. <laughs> and if I hadn't been one of those people, because they're one of the rule of thumb is you should at least save six months worth of you know your bill money and everything that whatever can cover you for six months you should always have that in your savings so that if something happens you can cover yourself and because i am one of those people who does that you know what i mean i was able to cover myself but and you know but if i hadn't been man like how was i gonna pay my rent you know what i mean a lot of people can't a lot of you you are in a situation where you can save some money and then you know when you get hit you can carry yourself over but a lot of people get, a lot of people can you know? they're like build a building but well, you know there are things that you just have to cut out too though i mean you just do you know what i mean like i i still don't get my nails done you know right right, right. like that's money that you could have in the bank you know what i mean um i don't get my hair done as regularly as i used to right you know what I mean? Make so there choice. are right, so many right. ways that you can save money. Right. But, you know, I think, yeah, I, 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 I you know, sometimes, you know, it, it could be much more other people's circumstances where it's not hair and nails. It could just be like, damn, man, I can't get a job. You could be in an economically depressed part of town. And you oh, no, I'm talking about before. people who work. I'm not even talking about people who oh. don't who don't got a job. <laughs> I'm talking about if right, you right, have right. a job. Oh, in ter- in, right, in yeah. terms of if you have a job, right, you do certain cutbacks. Yeah, I, I get you. Yeah. It's funny, I was doing that research um, on the National Law Center of Homelessness and Poverty um, out of Washington, D.C. They're saying uh, a couple of things as far as the primary reasons why there's such a, a, a homelessness problem in America. They're saying insufficient funds and lack of affordable housing are the right. leading cause of homelessness. They're saying in 2012, 10.3 million renters, approximately one in four, had extremely low incomes, ELI, as classified by HUD. In that same year, there were only 5.8 million rental units affordable to the more than 10 million right. people identified in ELI. Well, I told so you my situation this, yeah. when I was working my way through school, right? No, talk to me. Oh, I was working If I remember, time. I probably forget, but tell me, go ahead. I was working full time and going to school almost full time. And I had my own little apartment, whatever. And I think I was living alone maybe four years. And that fifth year in, maybe, I think. Uh, no, I was in college, so it couldn't have been fifth year. Third year, something like that. Um, right. They decided to, like, drastically go up on my rent. And I'm like, now you say what now? Smack I'm you in like, the head. Now, how am I supposed to pay my car note? How am I, you know what I mean? I'm like, yo, they chose ripping and not for that apartment. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, I, I might you. as well go get rent me a house or go, you know what I mean? Um, right, right, right. But because I was never home, it didn't make a sense for me, for me to have a house. You know what I mean? I had to be someplace mm. where they did, the, you know, the maintenance and all that stuff because I didn't have time for it. I was never home. And so mm-hmm. um, I was looking for other housing and stuff. I was like, this is ridiculous. And yeah, my mom it's and like dad. The oil situation. Right. Mm-hmm. My mom and dad was like, listen, just put your stuff in storage and move back home. It makes no sense for you to pay all that money on rent when you're never home. They said, you're never there. So we didn't think it was, they didn't think it made sense for me to be living there even before they tried to raise the rent. Because I was never right, there. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Right. Um, right. So that's when I had moved back home, but that ended up being a blessing in disguise because when I got sick, I needed to have been living with someone. But, but that's yeah. another thing. You got sick. Yes. Again, people, it's an either or scenario mm-hmm. where, oh man, I got hit with some serious medical issues. Right. I have to, you know, heal myself, but at the same time, it's not enough for me to pay rent and right. then pay my medical and all this. 
So that goes into insufficient income. You know right. what I mean? Or not even, you could be good, but then your bills and medical bills that you got hit with is like astronomical. Like, yeah, man, how am I going to pay this? Yeah. They said uh, in the same and they the want their Center, money. And they want their money. Mm -hmm. So the National Law Center said after paying their rent and utilities, 75% of ELI, as I said, extremely low income um, folks, uh, households end up, I'm sorry, mm, I messed this up. So after paying their rent and utilities, 75% of ELI households end up with less than half of their income left to pay for necessities such as food, medicine, transportation, and child care. So what are we talking about here? You know, where 75% of these folks are losing their homes or becoming homeless because what? They're simply not getting paid enough. So that's why you enough. have a lot of, what do they call that? When you have multiple um, generations living under one roof? I forget what they call right. it. Some type of home. Oh, goodness. Okay. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's not multi-generational is that what it's called <laughs> I, 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 i'm just taking a shot in the dog yeah <laughs> you know because you have a lot of people who are living in the house with their mothers us uncles everybody living in the same house because they can't afford not to to do that and then that way you're able to have more money to take care of your kids you have a live-in babysitter basically you know what i mean you can't afford it you can't afford it right so the standard of living is too rich for people's blood especially for what companies are paying employees you know what i mean right. so um it's not just as simple as fact oh he drugged up or whatever like that or you know he just can't balance his books there are certain things that are are, are societal flaws that are are leaving people behind and people can't afford it and you know how life is you get hit with that left curveball oh bomb man medical oh bomb yo my kids got uh, got sick or yeah oh. so it's like we i think we have to re seriously rethink how we deal with folks uh, when it comes to homelessness in this country right and what we're paying working class people in order for them to have life liberty in the pursuit of happiness remember that saying that we've been learned in school like every citizen have a right to have life liberty and pursuit of happiness right and uh if we don't deal with it i think that uh it's going to be brimming over the top as far as homelessness situation and um how we're dealing with the other expenses that we uh, that we're dealing with uh in this country man um it's coming to be a serious problem okay so we're gonna get to the next song uh the next song is by mr international his song is called Owo, oh, oh, coming straight out of Chicago, Illinois. His brother got Shy some heat. Town. He come with some Afro beat. What? All right, what, what? with this. <laughs> Check this out, man. Mr. IT. Gcom Radio. Every 
day I hustle Get myself together cause life's a puzzle Yeah, I know come the struggle So everything I get I go flip and double I'm on mega flex like muscle Though I keep a humble they go wish I pumpo Made it through the jungle no be me go crumble Get money by the bundle I go make them tumble Show show me shy shit go go boy Let's start from the beginning. There's many, but nothing like this internet radio show. Yeah. Beat my frequency. G-Com Radio. Y'all know what's up. Positive vibes, yeah. Hey, it's been heating up in the seven. Yeah, it's been heating up in the seven. I've been out here working in the seven. What? It's been heating up in the seven. Four seven in the seven. Man, it's been heating up in the seven. Roll up, I slide out. Pull up, slide out. We in the seven. All the way from New York to the O. Four oh seven one eight. The vibe king. Yeah. Imagine like Disney, I got a hurricane trying to hit me. I got two exes saying they miss me, taking next to three. Money my business, how many grown men that beating they feelings? Cause they baby mama be so appealing. She from the city, she back in the club. Tell me what's going to happen to the children. Uh, I got the magic like Penny. Either we slip the Henny or the Remy. Hoes and Kissimmee, they wish they was kissing me. I got a queen, I don't need a half any, no. Back in the O, watch it unfold. The smoke by the O, but who bought the rope? She be at oh no, I be with the plug. I be with Cynic and Scala and Crush. Positive vibe, yeah, my mind is so limitless. Either way, 100% what I'm giving it. Either way, we gon' sell out the Amway. My energy low with a crime rate. I do it for all of us, not fame. Newest Orlando, it's my fam. In Florida, we don't need a spray tan. Her pop could class of 2010. What it, what it do? It, it, it's G-Com Radio. I am one of the flyers. On iHeartRadio. You work it in the seven. What? It's been heating up in the seven. Four seven in the seven. Man, it's been heating up in the seven. Pull us like that, we in the seven. That's where we at, where you already know. Four oh seven one eight. Just throw the doors over, let that bitch sway. Ride down, motherfucker, I fo. Hey, fuck that building, man, my chain is a high so. Yo, angel, what these niggas really want, ma? We tell these niggas that I really, really got dough. I'm the voice of the motherfucking city, nigga. They tell these niggas they ain't really fucking with me, nigga. I keep them things in my basement like ticker, nigga. Hear my voice real loud like bigger, nigga. Moving them things from state to state, from oranges to pizzas on my fucking license plate. Man, the niggas ain't fucking with we, boy. I plan for keeps no cut like D, boy. I wanna put me in so comes to fucking feet, boy. I keep cocky, man, I'm closer to my dreams, boy. Netflix, man, my niggas on some stranger things. In my city, they pulling triggers like stranger things. Now let it breathe, nigga. <laughs> Fuck you niggas thought it was. This shit ain't Disney, nigga. So next time you in my city, <laughs> make sure you careful loud in the fucking seven. Yeah, it's been heating up in the seven. I've been out here working in the seven. What? It's been heating up in the seven. Four seven in the seven. 
Man, it's been heating up in the seven. Pull up, slide out, we in the seven. 40718. Um, yeah, man, we 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 back here, man. We back here. We just heard Mr. International with Oh Whoa. That was coming out of Chicago, Illinois. And to back up that song to come in on the tail end was Creative Angel and Young Scholar with The Seven out of Orlando, Florida. It's funny he said seven is uh, for those folks from the 718. That I think he said a four or seven. My bad. I don't even want to mess it up. But anyway, from people that from New York <laughs> that's moving down to Orlando, Florida and showing that that uh, that that direct link um, from New York to Orlando, Florida. So shout out to Orlando. I used to live in Orlando. Uh, when I was a kid, beautiful place, beautiful place, man. A lot of bugs, though. I remember swarms of bugs. <laughs> but yeah, man, I gotta go back down to Orlando and see how it's changed. Yeah. So um, before we get into the third topic, which uh, has to do with um, uh, Tiger Woods, we're gonna get into news you need to know. Let's get it started. Ladies and gentlemen, around the world and right in your neighborhood. <laughs> It's the news you need to know. A study on pandas diet found that they have the same amount of protein in their system compared to carnivores. Pandas eat more leaves, stems, and shoots of various bamboo species. They've evolved teeth and jawbones for chewing bamboo, but their digestive tract resembles that of a carnivore. Nutritional ecologist David Raubenheimer from the University of Sydney says there is also a broader message from this study. It demonstrates the importance of considering both foods and nutrients in understanding the evolutionary ecology of animals. This is what nutritional geometry is designed to do. Of course, humans cannot be excluded from the animal kingdom. Number two. CDC says don't wash your chicken. The CDC issued a stern warning against washing raw chicken or meat. CDC tweeted that it can spread germs from the chicken to other food or utensils. According to the CDC, some raw chicken can be contaminated with Campylobacter bacteria and possibly Salmonella or Clostridium perfringens bacteria. The best way to rid chicken of any bacteria is introducing it to heat. The CDC also recommends using a separate cutting board to cut raw meat and to, quote, never place cooked food or fresh produce on a plate, cutting boards or other services that previously held raw chicken, unquote. And that is the news you need to know. Yeah, we're coming out of that uh, news you need to know segment. It's funny, right, with the CDC is talking about doing washing chicken. Now, I have to say, I'm going to have to interject here on this one. See, now, this is the thing. CDC says don't wash your chicken doesn't get rid of bacteria. See, this is the difference between cultures. I don't understand. I don't think that the CDC offices has plenty of West Indian parents in them. If all the West Indian parents or West Indian people know what I'm talking about. Now, they said don't wash your chicken with water to remove bacteria. See, this is how I came up in a West Indian household and having all friends from Trinidad, from Jamaica, from um, from Barbados, from St. Lucia, from Dominica, every which away from the Caribbean, we wash the chicken, not with water, but you wash the chicken by putting salt and lemon, squeezing lemon on it and leaving the lemon sitting in there for 10, 15 minutes. As we know, bacteria doesn't live in acidic environments. That's why we use lemon. If we did not have lemon, we would put vinegar on that and we would let it sit for 10, 15 minutes and then go back to it and add our seasoning. Ain't nobody from our household, ain't, when they when the CDC came out with this report, this article that came out, ain't nobody was saying, oh, wash it with, with water. Let me tell you, unanimously all West Indian folk were saying what ain't nobody washing their chicken with water and then I saw this video that was with insider um it, inside edition that was talking about the same thing a video that's right now that's on and then he had the people in you know the chef with the hat and the white coat and then he had everybody surrounding the table this is why you don't wash your chicken with water and he put the black light on it and you saw all the little splotches of you know of the bacteria with listen we all know this 
We all know this. We don't eat, they know this bacteria, this, but we understand we wash down. That's why you have two sponges. You have one for your dishes and one sponge for wiping down your, your sink and all that. And as far as the chicken is concerned or fish is concerned, you wash it with vinegar or put a, a, a lemon or lime on the food. Now, let me um, tell you. Yeah. Go ahead. Some Go houses ahead. do, some people do wash their chicken with water. What I do, or, you know, I don't really cook no more, but when I did cook, what I would do is soak my chicken in um, salt water. Sure okay. did. And that removed all that slimy. Slime, oh, I can't stand right. That's that what those salt. nasty right. good. Oh. Right. I'm sorry I didn't explain that before, but go ahead. Tell it to with salt. Though. Yeah, that removed all that slime and stuff off the chicken and stuff, and there you didn't have to go. worry about none of that when you when you eat your food. There you go. That's what I'm talking. I never about. thought about you know doing the lemon or nothing, but I'm not really a lemon flavored type because you know they be putting lemon on your fish and I'm in, or they'll put it inside inside your container with your right. fish or whatever. I think that's supposed to make it not smell so bad. But when yeah, it, right, right. when it, when it's my fish leans up against it and I taste that lemon on my fish, I don't really like it. So, okay. yeah. No, see, when you, when you prep your, prep your fish, they squeeze the lemon on it. I don't taste the lemon after you broil it or bake it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it removes the extra fishy smell from fish mm -hmm. and kills the bacteria. So, um, and then I, I mean, I, you know, for me, when I, when they serve the plate, um, at restaurants, you know, I, I squeeze the lemon over the fish. That's why I like, mm -hmm. I like that lemon taste. But yeah, um, yeah, folks, they not talking about no water. I don't know what the down south, you know, soul food cooking, you know, the, the, the black households do. But from West Indian households, we use yeah, lemon, we use we vinegar, try. and we use salt. All right. Yeah, put so, some soap in some salt water. That's how, and, and that helps to get flavor too, because a mm. lot of people put their seasoning on their chicken and you know put it in the in the in the bag with the flour and shake it up but you don't have to put that much on there right when um you soak it in that salt because it just soaks in that flavor man that chicken is so good when you try it when, oh, when you do it like that uh, yeah i, I mean it's seasoned to the bone <laughs> so good <laughs> so that's a little that's a little you know education from from the, the from the black side of things yeah you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, so go ahead, y'all. Use lemon and use vinegar and use salt. I don't know about no water, but yeah. Anyways. Anyways. We're going to move on to the next one. Yes. So, <laughs> this one is about Tiger Woods. You know, he just won his uh, the Grandmaster. You know, we got the green jacket put on. But it's funny how this came out right after. All right? Right after he wins. So, Tiger Woods is getting sued. A wrongful death suit from someone at one of his uh, at his bar down in in Florida, all right. Someone died from uh, drinking too much, and they they ended up dying, you know, uh, when they left the, re the the restaurant. So, um, let me let me just bring you guys up to speed. So on Monday, a, a, a suit was filed by parents of Nicholas Emmisberger, a bartender at the Woods in Jupiter, Florida, who was killed in a one car crash in December after leaving the sports bar owned by Woods. The plaintiff suing Tiger Woods will have to prove that their son was a habitual drunkard in order to win the case. They're suing Tiger Woods cause this man, Nicholas Emmisberger, died. Now, Florida is one of 42 states with some form of what they call dram shop laws. I ain't never heard of this, but 42 states has passed past this. But it means which allows the, the, the agreed parties to hold alcohol providers responsible for damages caused by patrons who were served negligently, typically when they were visibly intoxicated. Right. Now you think, man, this ain't passing. Well, you know, in New York, which again, this is new to me, one well-known case, a jury in 2005 awarded $135 million dollars to the family of a girl who was left paralyzed in a car crash caused by a drunken football fan after a New York Giants game. The stadium's beer vendor was initially deemed liable for $105 million, though the parties later settled for $25 million. This is real! This mm -hmm. is real. Yeah. How me? I'm like, what? Tiger Woods getting sued? For what? 
because the man drank and then left the bar and then end up in a car crash. Now, you know, all due respect to the family that lost their, their son, you know, that's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah. How are you going to sue Tiger? I, I mean, really? Really? Because the man drank too much? I thought you were supposed to, when you drink, you drink to a certain and then you stop. I mean, right? but if they got footage much. showing that this man was visibly towed up and they continue they to serve no him. They got no footage. They don't have and the no family food, is blaming the woods, you know, uh, side of the, the, the defense that he erased the video footage of him drinking. But if they say they say it's hard to prosecute uh, or, or or to get uh, a charge in their favor because you have to prove that uh, this boy was giving. Uh, you have to prove that the son was a habitual drinker. Uh, and a habitual drunkard and that Tiger Woods knew this or the people in his business knew this and gave mm -hmm. him alcohol anyway but then it's hard because how do you prove that you know All if right. he serves beer and then meaning as a habitual drunkard that means he can't control himself every time there's beer or liquor in front of him he has to take it and he becomes more intoxicated but that's hard because if he's serving liquor and he's passing it up to give it to people and he's not sneaking drinking it then that you can't you can't prove that under uh, the habitual. I mean, I just I think it's board. difficult, anyways, because even if you're not you know a vendor or if you're not an establishment that serves alcohol, you know if you're a friend of someone and you see that that person shouldn't be drinking anything, it's you know it's just like you having to take the keys away from them and not letting them go get behind the wheel. You know, should you be held responsible for allowing this person to drive? And sometimes you would say, hey. I can't control them. I can't tell them not to drive. I tried to take the keys. We had to get into a fight. I let them go and hang up. But then you, somebody ends up getting killed. Call the police on them. Do whatever you have to do. But, you know, it, it's difficult to, to try to make a judgment call there. You know, are you, you know, a, an accessory to this, this crime that's now happening because you knew that this person was intoxicated and should not get behind the wheel, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but then you know do you now start suing bakeries because somebody's diabetic and they shouldn't be eating sugary you know foods you know they you... remember that yeah have you heard about that mcdonald's the lady that sued mcdonald's because they gave her a coffee that was too hot mm -hmm. yeah and she spilled it on herself and scalded mm -hmm. her skin yo this mm -hmm. is crazy because there was no warning to say that you know no coffee is hot coffee that's be hot like that listen listen this country is running away with some stupid, frivolous lawsuits on companies and other people. This is ridiculous. This is getting out well, of control. Sometimes, I don't know. It's, it's getting out of control. <laughs> but on. sometimes, you know, I don't know. There, there's a certain temperature or something, I think, that the, the coffee is supposed to be. There's a certain temperature that they're supposed to warn you, you know, that you, you can't get burned. Because even if she didn't spill it on herself, if she drank that, I mean, when her throat be all jacked. <laughs> oh, oh, that's what, what, when you, you, make, when you got your own coffee maker at home, you making coffee. You know the coffee hot. You don't. You ain't telling the difference between a hundred and five degrees and ninety degrees. But you know the coffee hot, so you're gonna handle it with care. So what are we talking about? Where this lady wants to make? I mean, well, it's different when you're getting it for a restaurant because there's supposed to be a cap on there. It should be, you know, you at home in a situation and you ain't got no lid on your stuff or whatever. It's a little, you're a little more careful or whatever. Man, listen, man, it's getting out of control, man. The United States is just the suit capital. I know people from other countries be like, damn, y'all sue for this and sue for that, really? And, it, and, and in defense of it, I'm like, well, that's the only way where you get people to move on changing their, their business practices. But when you hear some of these cases, it's like, yo, people are suing for the smallest things. Like, come on. And they getting some of them just getting through on these little small technicalities. I'm like, really? You just can ask the person, listen, this is not set up like this. Could you arrive? Well, there's a difference from spilling some hot coffee on you, and yeah, you burn and sting your skin for a minute, and then getting a third degree burn. Now that's there's a huge difference there. So I can understand why you would win a lawsuit because you get a third degree burn because some coffee spilled on you. Because I have had made I don't drink coffee, but I have made some hot chocolate before, 
and I spilt it and I didn't get no third degree burns. You know what I'm saying? Again, that stuff was it. hot and it was hot to the point that I had tears in my eyes because my skin was burning, but I didn't have no <laughs> third degree burns and that not well, you know, held it under some cold water and I was good. Well, but that's what the lady <laughs> but that's what the lady said. We don't know. We we personally don't know, haven't seen any pictures. He's saying, Oh my god, I got like second and third. She went to the burn. hospital, I thought. I, I mean that case is an old case, but I thought she went it's to the hospital. Case, she right. had like third degree burns or something. Yeah. <sighs> The point is, we getting out of control, man. All right, especially with Tiger, and I mean, look, it is your personal responsibility, and also if your friends love you, because that's what friends, you know, have for each other, they're not gonna let you drive. So that should be the responsibility is you as an adult, and if you can't make those decisions, the people around you are saying, nah, man, that's. That we you, you good on that the friends the friends now I don't know Tiger you don't even know if Tiger was even in this it was even there it's you know what I mean establishment though that's you know they can't sue the employee oh your your employee is your representative so it's so 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 oh man this is out of control this is out of control listen I, I'm just I'm just saying because you know I know this t- cases like this have existed for I think I we argued something like this when I was in paralegal school when I, yeah. you know, kind of wanted to be an attorney. And so yeah. I think there was a case out about this then. So, yeah, there is, you know, statutes regarding it. And, uh... Yo, yeah. take your drunk ass home, alright? You know, <laughs> don't you, know you would think that's what they would do, but that ain't what happens, so... And then what do you say about all those when you have, like, those special events going on, like, I don't know, it could be St. Patty's Day or Freaknik or or any event with a whole lot of people in there. People already drunk going to the bar. So now what you going to do with those tons of people that are pour into your bar, they're already drunk, and then you serving them, and they have a good time. Even New Year's Eve, people, people, yo, they, they are yeah, sloshed. I mean, you see people. So now what you going to do? If you're a bartender, you see people daily. So you kind of understand and you have a feel for when somebody has had too much. And you're supposed to not serve them anymore when you feel like, you know, buddy, you've had enough. You know what I mean? That's that's what you're supposed to do. Right. And, then I, 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 and, and there are some... You know, and, that, and they have insurance for those purposes. Like, I, I, I believe they're supposed to have certain types of insurances for those reasons. So because then they what's know. the cutoff point? Then, then, then well, now what's the cutoff point? You have to see a person know. visibly and in, 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 as a bartender. So. <laughs> oh, because I've been there. I've been to bars where people are having fun, and then you know, right, it's not to the point where they get throw up and they. And, and some people can handle drug. more than others, or whatever. There you go. How do you but make there's that like a. I guess you can tell if they're you know if you're, the, but there sometimes the person doesn't come to the bar because I've been you know at places where somebody's bought me a drink and I'm somewhere far away from the bar and I'm sitting at the table. You know what I mean? So let me, let me tell you something. I went to my my friend's um uh mother's birthday, all right? And her sister, and this older woman, this she was like in the seventies. I went with my mother and um had a good time. It was a Panamanian uh 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 soiree. It was nice, you know what I mean? Um but her sister got in the car, we drove me, me and my mother drove them home, right? Now, she was plainly nice, plainly, because she was going on and on, and, ju- and she kept on calling me by my brother's name. She's like, <laughs> and I corrected like two or three times, and she kept on calling me my brother's name. I'm like, okay, well, all right, call me whatever you want. <laughs> so I'm, dri- I'm driving, and I'm like, I'm like, so how, how many drinks did you have? And I'm thinking she going to tell me like, well, I had 10, and she's with her husband in the back. She's like, I had two drinks. I was like, two drinks? What did you drink? I drank Heineken. What? Obviously, you're not a drinker. Oh, yeah, that's me too. You can give me a cooler, and I'm like, and I'm tore like, up. It's, I don't drink. So I said, you sure? She's like, yeah, she's not a drinker. Tell her, I tell her, her husband, she said, yeah, she don't drink. She just had two drinks. And obviously, she was nice, but I'm not going to stop somebody's fun. You know, as long as they ain't doing nothing to nobody. But she was like, nice. <laughs> yo, she was nice as hell. And then now, it, it makes me think of that situation. I'm like, she had two drinks, and she was, you know what I mean? So now, it's like, so the bartender, she's having a good old time talking, so the bartender stops, and like, no, I can't drink, give you any drinks anymore. I'm like, that's a hard thing to 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 make a, a a call on at the moment now if you throwing up 
and you in the, on the sidewalk, and you coming back all sloss, sloppy drunk, and let me get another drink. Like, all right, cool, nah, man, you done, you good. But come on, it, it, it's the line is subjective here, man. And um, it really is. But I, I would have to say that if you can visibly see, if there's somebody who can't barely stand up, or they got their head laid on the bar, or they all loud and causing commotion and arguing with other people, you would have to say, okay, I think you've had enough. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, oh man, <laughs> yeah. It's soon is getting way out of control in the United States. Um, it's the stupidest things, man. The stupidest things. And but I you know, it's it's no before. difference than you know that case where that girl was drunk and everybody was saying, well, "Where was her friends?" And how how did how did they not know that she was locked in the freezer? I mean, she was so drunk that she went into the freezer right, thinking that she was going her, into a room yeah, yeah. and got locked into a freezer, and then the 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 hotel, you know, they're saying sue the hotel, take it for everything they got. How could they not know that she was in the freezer? But who would assume that somebody's in a freezer? You know what right. I mean? Right. And who's watching this girl roam about the hotel? Like, you know, there could have been a moment where nobody knew where she was. Right. Going. Oh my God! Some of this is people just be emotional and be like, "I'm suing you." I'm like, no. <laughs> you I'm silly. But you never know until music. you live it. You know, until you go through that situation, you just don't know how you're going to react, and you don't know what those emotions and what those feelings are going to bring you to do. So you might feel justified in doing it. So I, I hate to really say, you know, but at the same time, I do look at the situation like, okay. You know, there's a lot of people who be going to that bakery. No, they shouldn't be going. There's a lot of people <laughs> eating at McDonald's. No, they shouldn't be eating at McDonald's. Remember, remember, remember the one where the guy sued McDonald's, or I think one fast food joint, because he got obese because of it, and it was he was suing McDonald's because he was blaming them for the food that he was eating. Hey, yo, this is an actual case. The guy. I sued. think I remember that. I think I remember that. And he, L- let me tell you this. Because of his obesity. I'm not going to say any names, and I hope she don't listen to this because she don't know I'm talking about her. <laughs> so there was a cousin of mine who uh-huh. um, she was always, I mean, she had the banging body, just petite, tiny, just thick in the right places. And then she uh, graduates, you know, because when you're in college, you're broke. She graduates college, get her a nice job. She's making good money. And now she don't really have time to cook. So she's getting fast food. And she picking up weight, and I mean, she getting thick. And she's like, I don't understand. Only thing I be eating, I eat two Big Macs. You eating two Big Macs? Do you know how many calories that is? (laughs) I'm like, ain't one Big Mac like a 900 some calories? That's that's what I'm saying. You can't blame other people for your they don't like if you don't if you've never had to pay attention to calories and stuff like somebody like me who has battled with weight my entire life you had to learn about calories you had to learn about how much fat is in this and how much this is in this but But somebody like her who didn't have to deal with that you know what i mean she didn't know that it was that many calories in the big mac she just like oh all i'm eating is two burgers so she just home. So she's she's just Homer Simpson and Simpson and then those burgers in her mouth, right? Smashing, like, oh, smashing. Big Macs. I'm like, nah, you ate man. two Big Macs. Nah, man, you can't every do that. day. Look, no. there's consequences and repercussions for everything that we do. And when yeah. it comes to food, you can't smash down two Big Macs <laughs> and then think. Every day. Stay the same. Every day. I mean, everybody have an occasion when they eat a bunch of stuff that they shouldn't. Oh, fine, but it but can't be an everyday day. thing. Like, you eating two Big Macs every day. Yo, I was so crazy. tickled when she said that. I'm like, yo, that's why you gained it weight. And you wanna, I don't understand. I didn't know why me having... Uh, eight eight uh, uh, fries, the large fries. I don't understand. And two Big Macs, and then a, a thirty-two ounce soda every day was and she making me innocently I don't get it. said it. So she really did not know that eat, she she shouldn't have been eating two Big Macs. She really did do, not know and that. You, and you do realize the older we get, the slower our metabolism becomes. Uh, right. Starts happens right we right. Our, our metabolism our metabolism our metabolism is not the same as it was when we were 20 right 10 years when you're 30 slow but down see, when you make 10. money too because you know it's a different from when you when you're going to cut co- when you're in college and you can't afford to get the food that you want to eat so you packing your little peanut butter jelly sandwich or a bologna sandwich or whatever true. and this then you true. get out of college and you can afford to eat food you start eating yeah you start picking up that weight 
And that excludes everybody with medical conditions. I'm not talking about people with medical. I'm talking about people that were thin before and then uh, six months down the line, eight months down the line, they're like 40 pounds overweight. Five years. Now, me, I'm over, I am I, I need to lose some. I'm about to go to the gym now. I hurt myself, unfortunately, um, on my, on my uh, arm. But as soon as I pull those stitches out, I'm going right to the gym because now it's time. I always have my personal limits that I have. I'm like, oh, well, you know, I'm getting a little... You know, a little, little mushy in the center. All right, I got to go to the gym and knock this off, get tighten it up. But you can't be mad. You can't eat two Big Macs and it'd be like, I don't know what happened. I, have, like I she, had like she was, every day. Like she really did not know. She just didn't. And I said, yo, do you know how many calories one Big Mac is? That's your issue. That's why you're gaining weight. <laughs> <laughs> And stop suing people because you gain weight off of the food they eat. All right? Ain't nobody put a gun in your head. Well, right? I mean, it did put something in play where they had to um, list the calories for the foods. And, and I think that some people, some people still don't care. But for some people, when you see the, how many calories and something, especially me, I'm like, oh, I'm not going to get that. Yeah. <laughs> Let right. me find something with a little, little few calories. Some personal responsibility. Some with less like, salt, like, something less carbs. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, sometimes I be up at the restaurant. I'm be like, now look at the calorie count. I'm like, damn, I can't. All right, let me just get this. Yeah, I make personal choices. Right. That's not gonna be good for me. Or if I know I eat, have a big meal in the day, I won't have a big one at night. It's personal responsibility. Right. But whatever, we going off track. Uh, yeah, Tiger. Sorry about it. And uh. We, you know, people are gonna sue, man. It's a money, it's a money, it's a money world, man. Anyway, so we are gonna get out of here. This was an extra long one because we were talking about uh, the abortion thing. That was a hot, passionate topic for the both of us. Um, but we and didn't get out of here. Fault, as always, as always, you know how I am. Too yeah. many syllables in one sentence. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, uh, please go to lifeblood.com. You know, uh, join on. Uh, start this community as we already know facebook is having some real issues and if you have any problems with facebook you know what to do i ain't gonna say too much but let's build the community the way we should and we can apply it in a way um that benefits us um from whatever passion that you do do or get into um this is a place for you lifeblood.com creating that new community for the 21st century and go ahead uh la talk to the people go to www.zanathebrave.com and go ahead and cop my book anti-bullying children's book zana the brave that's what i'm talking about until next time y'all we are we out deuces peace